Got a real good question from uh, one of my followers uh, on my email list. And basically the question was um, talking about the overfront right here. And um, in an overfront with zone blocking, um, what do you do? What, the question was basically this. Why do you have the center work a lion call, an ace lion, um, away from the play call? All right, so um, this is your mic, uh, the zero point. Um, let's say you've got a zone going to the right here, like a 14 zone, maybe you call it, um, uh, with a single back. And uh, you know maybe you're out of shotgun, maybe you're out of pistol, whatever you are, but you're handing the ball off to the right here. So why would you have the center double back um, if you're running a play side zone? Because now your, your tackle here, who is um, in a typical 4-3, he's shaded in a three technique, so he's shaded on the outside shoulder of this guard. What, or what happens if he slants hard inside? Um, does that screw this play up? Because the center can't help with that. There's no one there. And um, you know, I think this is the tricky thing about zone blocking is you start to think of these scenarios and you think, um, you know, what happens if this guy does this? What, what do we do? And you do need to have good answers for it. And, um, and, it, and honestly, I, I feel like I've been trying to study and learn the zone, zone blocking for um, probably six years now. And I am by no means am an expert in this, that's for sure for darn sure, um, number one, because I haven't been an O-line coach teaching zone blocking for um, six years or anything like that. I've been an O-line coach you know, for just a few years um, of my coaching career. Most of the time I've been either uh, a coordinator or a passing game receivers coach. So to me, you know, unless you're in the trenches and you're doing it day to day, um, there's some things that you just kind of figure out when you're in it, okay? Um, but that being said, I still think you can have answers for these things and you can figure these things out on your own. And here are some of the factors that you need to consider um, to make this play work and to block it this way. First of all, um, when you block it with this kind of a zone theory, okay, um, the way the theory that I'm talking about here, um, you are looking for a vertical push, okay? So there's different kinds of zone. Um, zone offenses. There's a zone where you're looking to um, basically try and block the outside shoulder of every defender, and you're and everyone is trying to step um, together with the zone. And um, you know, I'd call that a full zone. So everyone is stepping play side. You don't have anyone um, stepping away from the zone call. Okay, um, and that has its strengths. Running a zone. Um, a full zone in that way. I think if a team's blitzing you and they've got linebackers coming and there's gaps are filled, you have everybody step play side, block their gap, you get a you know a body on a body, and you're off and running. Um, however, um, you typically tend to kind of lose some of your double teams in that sense, or maybe not get double teams where you want them to be. Especially if teams aren't blitzing, then you have guys they step play side. Um, and there's nobody there and they just go up to linebacker so they're really not helping anybody out before they go to that second level and and that's okay if you've got guys that can handle that solo block and they don't need help um, but um, in my experience is what what I think is the most effective thing to do especially in high school and below um, is to make sure that you get the um, maximum number of double teams um, on the line of scrimmage because if you get if you get all those double teams going um, I don't know if you've ever coached linebackers I've coached linebackers and I've been uh, a head coach um, supervising uh, a defensive coordinator who coaches linebackers at times one of the most difficult things you can do is to find players um, at that linebacker position who can fill who can step up and fill Okay, so that's just naturally a hard thing for them to do. But there's a ton of defensive linemen, uh, or it's a much easier to teach a defensive lineman to attack and just to get and just to get off the ball 
and apply vertical pressure. So it makes sense that um, as an offensive lineman or a, as, a, as an offensive line coach, you would want to get the maximum number of double teams, okay? And, and typically you might not be given the best players um, on your team anyway. You're not gonna get the studs as your old lineman. Um, I mean, you, you just aren't. And, and if you're relying on them as your old lineman, um, you're probably gonna be um, coming up short defensively. So you need to make the most with guys that um, can, can really work together um, as teammates and, and they're not the best, but two on one, you can get something out of them. You can make it happen. You can get them to believe, um, and, and you can get in them and you can get a great double team. So that's why I like this way of zone blocking is because it really helps you maximize the double team blocks. And then those places where you have the single or the solo blocks, um, you give your offensive lineman the freedom to basically block him wherever he decides to go. If he slants inside, um, you let him slant inside. I mean, you don't necessarily let him go anywhere, but you stay on him and you seal him down inside so that he can't make the play. He's still slanting, he's still getting inside, um, and you still have a one-on-one, -on -one, but you don't have to kick him out. It's not a mandatory, you have to, the running back's running through the A-gap, period. No, it's um, the running back could run through the A-gap, the B-gap, the C-gap, or you can cut it backside. It's wherever there's a window and you're relying on um, that premium talent of your running back to pick the window that he goes through. So um, back to the main question of what happens if you've got, um, or, or why do you want to have him double here? Well, you, the reason you want to have him double um, backside is because that is the easiest double team, okay? Um, if you pull him play side, he, chances are most teams are not gonna have a shaded outside three technique slanting inside. They're gonna have their backer responsible for that gap, okay? Um, that's just the way the majority of defensive um, fronts run. If they do that, um, it's kind of hard to get him down inside and across. Um, they would might line up in a head up technique and slant him inside or outside. I've seen teams line up in two, two techniques. And then on the snap, you know, they could be slanting inside or outside. And you don't know, they, they could either be in an over or under front, all right? And if that's the case, um, and your center doesn't know, um, I would have my center um, call a double with um, the weaker of the two guards that you think. So maybe uh, the right side guard struggles a lot more than the, than the guard on um, on the back side. I'd, I'd rely on my back side guard to go solo and my play side, um, I'd want to give him as much help as possible. Okay, so um, anyway, but if they are showing their alignment, they're showing their gap responsibility by their alignment, which most teams do, um, because their goal as a defense is, is usually just to get pressure upfield. Because if they can disrupt, if they can get upfield, um, then uh, then they've got you. Okay, especially at the younger levels. Older levels, sometimes you see. Um, defensive linemen that are a lot more read and react okay um, but typically younger levels you're gonna have a lot of success if you just have guys that get off the ball okay um, so anyway you want to help out the reason you want to double back here is because um, he's closest to the center this is a natural double team this is not a natural double team to the play side but it's natural um, to this back side okay and and in that double team they're working vertical okay um, they're, they're, the, the center's not going to take a step away from the double team his first step is going to be his left foot um, in the crotch of that tackle and the guards first step is going to try and get his right foot up in the crotch of um, the, the defensive tackle in there and they're going to try and get hip to hip and they're going to try and drive him okay um, that's the most basic double team block you can teach and it's simple and it's effective um, and and you should be able to get movement on this guy right here okay now if he's lined up a little more over one guy than another all right then one guy is going to get a little more of a body on him and the other guy um, can still get a good um, hard punch on him okay or be able to twist him or knock him over sideways okay you basically want to do whatever you can to get this guy disoriented um, uh, and and moved okay so you might have one guy standing them up and the other guy coming and cleaning them cleaning them up um, whatever it takes um, so anyway uh, let's say then this solo block here he 
Um, there's a couple ways you could teach us. One way you could say is, all right, he's shaded outside. Um, you don't need to, uh, you don't need to try to get outside of him. Although I, I, I kind of prefer um, keeping your shoulders square. Um, you could just basically go straight at him and block him. And in that sense, your shoulders turn a little bit. Okay. So if they turn a little bit, um, then what's going to happen is the best he can do is shoot up field here, and you've got a nice a gap run here. All right, um, but that protects you in case he cuts in case he comes inside. And if you like running your zone, basically a gap to backside, totally fine to teach it that way. Um, however, if you kind of want to be a little more have a little more integrity with this and uh, give your running back a little more freedom to cut up here to the play side, um, have your guard. Um, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna keep his shoulders square as he steps to basically um, get, to, to basically get head up or front up um, with that defensive tackle kind of square him up here all right so he's not going to try to necessarily get to his outside number um, per se because he's shaded outside but he's going to get square to him now as he steps lateral to get square or kind of drops it you know kind of takes a uh, um, I'll refer to uh, coach John Strollo here um, as he downshifts so he's not move he's not stepping back but he's getting his feet behind him as he takes that right foot le uh, sideways and back and his left foot's gonna come back um, to kind of get that forward lean and get ready to start drive walking. Um, he's gonna read this tackle. As that tackle, if he, if he either continues to pressure, he's in great position, just lock into him and drive him wherever you can drive him, either outside or inside, okay? Now as he levels up, maybe he downshifts with that right foot and the tackle, tackle slants inside, then he's going to just work back inside, maintaining contact on him and um, seal him down inside. And that should open up the B-gap for a nice run right there, okay? Or at least for the, give the back an option to bounce it outside. All right, so that's your solo blocking technique, okay? So basically, you, in this kind of a system, you only need to teach guys two things. You need to teach them how to um, execute a solo block on a guy um, where they stay on him and, and their guy cannot make the play. All right, you've got to maintain contact. Um, uh, basically, you've got to cover them up. Um, you might hear that, that word is stay on them, keep them covered up. And you've got to teach a double team, okay, and the double team to a backer, okay? And this all, the other factor in this that I want to mention is the fact that um, your splits, right near, right here on this drawing, okay? You can't really tell with X's and O's um, what it really looks like. Um, but I will say this, um, nearly every single zone team, um, zone good, good zone run team that I've observed, okay, as I've watched all these different videos of Texas and um, and now I'm watching uh, Pitt. Um, these are, you know, these are the best teams. Okay, they they um, they focus on zone blocking like no one else. Um, even uh, New Mexico. Okay, insane run game, New Mexico. All right, none of them are taking giant splits anymore. Okay, because of the zone blocking scheme. And when you tighten down your splits, when you have a one foot split in a zone run game, all right there's no gaps for these guys to get through okay it makes these double teams a lot easier to um, number one identify and maintain and you're literally right there okay so um, he can't slant across there's there's a one foot gap in between the two of them all right one foot split there's nowhere for him to slant inside without still being blocked okay now if, now if you do want to experiment with really wide splits then, I, then I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this guy's got to learn how to cover up that tackle in so much space. And that's going to look a little bit different technique-wise. You're going to have to drill that and get them to feel comfortable with having that much leeway and that much space. Um, so anyway, those are my, my thoughts and ideas for things that you can do um, to uh, get your, your zone blocking working. And what if this tackle slants inside? All right. So coach, I hope that makes sense answering your question there and I hope um, the rest of you guys that watch this can get something good out of it um, and it makes sense to you. Actually what it does to me is it kind of gets me pumped up. Um, I'm thinking, man, I, I, I'm ready to run some zone this year. You know, I want to try um, 
uh, some of these techniques. I want to try some of these ideas that I've learned um, this off season and hopefully um, you're ready to try them too because where it really happens is when you take ideas that you've learned, new ideas, and this is where um, I get so fired up every season um, to try new things and say that, that technique is money. I can teach that technique. I can make my guys confident in that new technique. Um, uh, you know, I can give them a way that um, they don't have to be the best athlete on the field and they can still be successful. Um, and so I get so excited that I'm even at the point where I go into school, I'm like, hey, hey, come here, listen to this, check this out. You know, what do you think of this? Um, or try this technique, like pretend I'm a defender, block me here. How's that feel? And I get just get so fired up um, wanting to show, um, show the guys on the team um, a new technique or, or something I learned and, and see how it works because I feel like then they get excited and, and I'm excited and we're all excited and we're fired up because we're like, hey, guess what? You know, we can, we can block anybody, all right? And, um, and so that's super exciting. And then when, and then when you take that and you get your, your, uh, someone who's really talented to buy into that, um, and that's where, you know, that's where you get some real magic happening, okay? Um, you know, you can feel really good about um, elevating uh, average or subpar athletes to the point where they can play and be successful. Um, but then you get that one talent or one of those two talented guys that you're like, this is my one guy, this, you know, um, or a couple of these guys, they've got a chance at the next level to be amazing. And, and you teach them some of these strategies and you're going to just see their, um, their opportunity skyrocket. Um, uh, kind of a funny thing that happened to me. Um, and I just want to encourage you guys, if you're not, um, an O-line coach um, by, you know, um, by design. Basically, um, I'm not an O-line coach by design. I played tight end one year in high school and basically half the time I was split out. Um, so I never really played it. And um, in college, I was a defensive back. I was a cornerback. So, you know, I was farthest thing away from being an offensive line coach there. Um, but you know, if, if you study the technique and if you um, just try to do what makes sense, if you just try to make sense of it in your mind and make sense of it to your players, you're going to have some pretty amazing successes. And I really believe that, um, you know, uh, it's funny because this track season, um, I had a player um, two years ago. He was, you know, a brand new track athlete, never ran track seriously before. Um, and, and, and I basically started teaching him hurdles and just all sorts of things. I probably screwed up a hundred times with him, but, um, I did get some things right. And I, I just really focused on those things and I got him believing that he could do it and he bought into it. And, um, right now he's a junior. He just qualified for the, um, for state again. He qualified as a sophomore for state, um, uh, and it was all because he just bought in and he, he believed and he took something that I was passionate about and, and now it's his passion. And I mean, the sky's the limit for this guy. I mean, this, you know, it, it's going to be awesome just watching him in the state meet this year and again next year. Um, he's already broken school records. So, um, but me, a hurdle coach, I mean, seriously, I just one season, I said, you know what, what I decided is I said, you know what, I'm going to be. I'm going to just learn how to coach hurdles. I'm going to do it. I don't care. I'm going to find the best possible way to coach hurdles that's out there. And, and I think you can take that same mentality into um, any position you coach, whether you've been an offensive line coach and you want to coach quarterbacks. Um, you know, you can go out there, you can research, you can find, you can experiment, you can try things. And, and I believe you can make yourself a better quarterbacks coach than someone who played quarterback um, at, the at the collegiate level. I mean, if anything, you have an advantage because um, you're figuring it out in your head. All right, they're just trying, they've already done it. They're just like, we'll just do it like this. All right, but they don't know how to explain it. And um, if you haven't done something, sometimes I feel like um, it makes you much a much better teacher because you've got to get it figured out in your mind first. So anyway, coaches, it's getting late tonight. I got to wrap it up. Um, but anyway, enjoyed sharing this with you guys. I, um, I just get so passionate about this stuff sometimes. 
um, but it's so much fun to talk about it. Send in your questions. You've got a question about something. Um, hopefully I can help you answer it. If not, it's going to sit in my mind until I figure out what, what, a, what a good answer is for it. Um, and eventually I'll, I'll get something that um, will help you out. All right, later coaches.